Frankie P here, hanging out with Loud Luxury. Um, glad we're talking about the DJ thing. I don't want to sound like a te like a cheesy DJ. You know how guys will come to me like, hey, I DJ too. How often do you guys get that? For like guys will come, oh, I'm a producer too, I'm a DJ too. I mean, we get it quite a bit, but we're never rude about it because at the end of the day, everyone started somewhere, you know? Right, that's like, a good thing though. And they could I mean, possibly be a fan. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If like, people are doing it, like that's, I think that's a good thing. No, I bring it up though because like I have to apologize to you guys because I've been DJing club for a long time and this girl came up to me, a couple girls came up to me like, I wanna say a year ago, maybe a little bit longer. And they're like, play this song, Body. And as a DJ, you hear a request and you're like, I've never heard of that, it must be trash. Like, yeah. who are you, get away from me. And I swear, in like one week, I had like four or five different girls at different places ask for it. And I'm like, get out of my face. No. And then, <laughs> and then we started playing it on air and I'm like, this is the song, oh my God, they were on it before I was, I feel so stupid. And so that's why I need to apologize to you guys because I was like, this is trash. Hey, requests right? aren't always a bad thing, yeah. unless no, it's like a Macarena or something like well, that. Yeah. They're not. You, always you play bad. Justin Bieber yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. It's all good, man. Uh, you know, one of my first gigs, I was DJing like a wing night, and I got a bunch of requests for Fetty Wap. I remember back in the day, I'm like, "Who's that? Like, what's Fetty Wap?" And I was so late to that train, yep. so I totally been there. So I know how you feel. So were you DJing together before, or were you just no, a DJ? No, we were both DJing. Like he was doing like a, a night at a club. I was doing like a night at another club. Are oh, you doing like like stuff. the private route? Like you were doing like mitzvahs and weddings and stuff? Well, like. We were we started off like I started off in a club like okay I actually started off uh, as like a bouncer in a club because I like wanted to get my foot in the door kind of thing and then I went to the guys the DJs there uh, that were playing and I was like listen like I gotta get in here like what do I gotta do and they're like honestly you can have like the Thursday nights and I was like that's perfect. always how it started I was like, perfect. Yeah. Yeah, like a lot of the residencies I got that became like Friday and like the good nights and the good sets started because they were like, hey, come in on a Tuesday for In The Biz. Yeah. Like, we'll give you a you bar tab. It. Like, yeah, you got to earn it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So my turntables. We, we DJ oh, stuff. Out I had my own turntables I had to bring out. You bring the 1200s? Yeah. Oh, I, for a while, I used to bring my own 1200s everywhere. Let me tell you, it wasn't easy because I'd be walking around just like... And you're not a big guy like me, right? You're not very... <laughs> how tall are you? Like, because when you walked in, we were like the same way. Like, six. Like, yeah, me too. So like, I would carry my big turntable cases in to like the club yeah, and mix it on my back. And I'm like... 100%. The worst. I had a backpack for my mixer. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, and then I put all the cables in there and stuff. Yeah. So I just looked weird, like like a kid going to like summer camp or something, like with all my stuff walking in the club. That's the grind, though. Yeah, um, we DJed some stuff together. We were pretty close at the time, and uh, we would just kind of wait for the right shows. You know, if we were asked to open for an artist, something that was mm -hmm. a better look. But we still had a lot of hustling on our own, just to you know make a little bit of money and do that. Um, and that's how it all started. It, were you doing like open format type? Yeah, music? yeah, basically. Yeah. So I didn't have any music at the time. We I, didn't make any music. Really. How do you transition from being an open format DJ to being like, can we can we call it like an EDM type? Is that what you guys do? To be Festival, honest, it actually DJs. helped us because we were always yeah. passionate about um, electronic music, but doing the open format route and figuring out how to get people moving, whether it be like a wedding of a bunch of fifty year olds, yeah, or it be like a college bar. That actually is something that we apply to our music. You know, just knowing how to get people yeah. excited and get them going. Yeah, so I think maybe that's why I want to ask you this question. What do you think made Body so special in a place that's like super oversaturated with like dance music? Luck? Yeah. Did you really? Honestly, yeah, yeah. so we had no idea it was going to blow up. We had no idea that it was going to get to where it was. And I mean, it was really a trip for us because we started playing a lot of these places. And one of the first places uh, where it hit us was Boston. And we were just like, how do they know the words to this? Like everybody like oh like you entire, just dropped it and like then you the went entire to club was singing it like the entire club was singing it. we're crazy. like we're like this is really weird so did you get into it first because i know you did like remixes before body came out right yeah. oh yeah we've been producing music pretty much almost the entire time that we were djing together you know it was years in the making of just perfecting that and figuring out our sound it wasn't like this was the first song we made out of nowhere mm -hmm. you know it, it caught yeah, on we had made a lot yeah. of yeah. really bad music before yeah. <laughs> well everyone starts doing it terribly like i remember i used to try to make edits and i'm like i suck i at wish i had the first stuff. song we made that i could show you you don't I'm have like, it i have to you have it like, somewhere. saved somewhere I, it's I saved somewhere. like on a computer you gotta put it up as like a TVT one day on like Instagram yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. Was it like a remix of something? Or was no, it, it was, it was, it was completely original. original. Yeah, yeah, completely original. <laughs> yeah, it what definitely was it wasn't great. It's called Vices. Yeah. yeah. If we were to Google it, would it come up? Or no. it's one of those like it, there's an article. Right? There's an article, but it's not like the the link for it is not active. Yeah. Okay. Now, when you guys DJ, since you're both like or were open format DJs, who actually does the DJing? Like, because 
Well, we know how it works. It's we, literally just two decks of the mixer. Like we DJed together because we had multiple decks, so we would go back and forth on songs. However, you know, I'll be completely honest. Joe has a lot more experience DJing. I was started off as a producer. He taught me how to DJ. Oh, okay. He can scratch like really dope, like yeah, a DMC really? champion. Okay. You know, I can just do the beat matching. So <laughs> there's definitely a bit of a difference in talent. With yeah, because sometimes I see like groups of DJs and it's like six dudes all behind the mixer. I'm like, <laughs> why do you need so many hands back there? I mean, like, there's a lot of knobs to be. Twisted. Yeah, you ever yeah. seen that? Oh, have you seen the videos? One of my favorites. It's like, screw it, I'm just gonna say names. It's like Steve Aoki and like Cash Cash or whatever. We were at it that was, party. Oh, you were there for that? Yeah. And they put like a GoPro like right in front of the yeah. mixer and they're just showing them like touching random knobs but not doing we anything at, at all. Party. It was actually a pretty lit party, but. Like. Oh, I believe it. <laughs> yeah. But I just, as a DJ, like you watch that stuff and you're like, this is so. Hey, lame. to be like, completely fair though, if Aoki and Cash Cash and all of them wanted to crash our set and DJ, we'd find a way to make it work. Yeah. You know, yeah. it can sometimes be a bit cluttered, but you know, it's all a family thing at the end of the day. Well, so since you were open format DJs, does that mean you guys don't plan your sets? You know, some DJs will have the set planned out like um, to the T or depends do you just where we are. It? Like basically wherever we are, we'll make a, a special set for like the place. So it's not like obviously we'll like freestyle a little bit if we need to. Like there's been times where we've gone in, we planned a set, and we're like, okay, this is what we're gonna play, and completely had to like 180 and like play some like play completely different music. Yeah. Every show is different, so we wouldn't be doing our job as DJs to do the exact same thing every time. Um, but we do definitely have moments that we're like, okay, at this part we want to play this song and kind of do this, you know? How do you guys make that decision like in the clutch? Like you're in the middle of a set, do you guys just look at each other Sometimes and it's like, it's just like, like DJ, man, like, you know how to read yeah. a crowd. Well, the thing is, I, but I'm by myself, but for you guys, do you guys like look at each other like, let's make an executive, or does one of you just yeah. make an executive design? How does it work? There, there was a time I remember we were playing at, was it Aura here? Yeah, we played yeah. at a club over we had here. A, we had a set planned out, and we're like, okay, sick, like, this is what it's gonna be. Mm -hmm. And then, like, we got there and, like, just heard what the music was being played. It was, like, techno and, like, kind of, like, oh, deep God. and, like, yeah. like kind of, yeah. like, more underground. And I was just like, where, because I have this old USB that I always bring around, like, as a just in case kind of mm -hmm. thing. And I was like, where's Big Blue? I'm like, get it. And I just, like, plugged it in and started, like, playing, like, Wait, that's like, what the flash drive is called? Yeah, Big, Big Blue. Blue. <laughs> yeah. I actually have it. I'll show you. No way. That's hilarious. hilarious. Yeah. And you hilarious. just have, like, all, like, it's just emergency. Had this, yeah. I've literally had this since college, like, What kind of music? Oh, jeez, it's enormous. No wonder you call it Big Blue. <laughs> Hold on, let me see. Jeez. <laughs> it looks like an old USB too. So what's on this then? Like what like, kind of stuff is like on this? E like everything? Yeah. Like hip, like old hip. Oh, like you have like all your open format stuff in yeah, there. Yeah, like, like totally. not even like remixes, just like your. Well, the remix is like an entire stuff. record collection of like you know eight years of us DJing. You know, so it yeah. just has anything you might yeah. need. I literally just did that the other day where I took all my music off my laptop, but I went through like my history. Do you guys read Serato or Tractor? Yeah, that's you know what you get. Yeah. Okay, so like I took all my history because I'm like, yo, I need to have a backup to the backup to the backup. But I got like a million more in my house. Then I'm like, yo, let me have it all on a flash drive. So like, I popped in the flash drive, I'm like, I don't know if I'm gonna fit all this. I put all the music from every live set I've done in the last, I don't know, like two years, and I put it on that flash drive, and now I carry it everywhere I go in case it's like, in case. oh, I gotta jump on, exactly. like, click. Genius, that's smart, bro. That's such a DJ thing to always be like, <laughs> Do you guys, what are like extra things you guys carry with you when you go to your sets? Like, because uh, you're like, preparing for the worst. Not much, yeah. just this and headphones that, pretty that's much. That's it, that's yeah. all you carry and, and earplugs too, because I don't want to go deaf. Okay. That's it? That's just that that's one little bit? it. Oh my god. So what do you produce on? You carry a laptop with you guys? Yeah, or? well we yeah, carry yeah. Our laptops everywhere we go, you know, that's essential. But uh, we produce on Ableton. I find it's just really easy to use on the road. Super simple, easy to get songs done. Now you guys blew up kind of fast, you can say that, right? Kind of? Kind of, sort of, yeah. Sort of. I mean, no one saw the behind the scenes, so yeah. Well, no, fair, no one knows the fast. grind, but like, yeah. there's a lot of DJs that go through the regular grind. It always looks the like clubs. it's overnight, but it's yeah. never overnight. Right, but like, you're doing big, big, big shows now. Like, you, you said you did Lollapalooza the other day. Yeah, that was Do crazy. you still get nervous, like, before you go on stage to do a Lollapalooza? Or a big I mean, Lollapalooza like was definitely one that we would feel that a bit more just because it's like, wow, this is a crazy crowd. You know, everyone talks about Lollapalooza. Like, that's the festival. I honestly you know? wasn't really so, nervous for that. No? No. Like, yeah. we've done a lot of these shows now where they're like really, really big and a lot of people. And now I just kind of get excited. I'm like, yes, like, let's go. Do you ever miss the small room crowd? Yeah. Oh, we still try oh, our we, best to we play. Do like to do little, little, little yeah. ones. We do lots of those still, for cool. sure. Now you have a, I want to say it's like 50 plus date tour coming up. I don't know if you're, are you in the middle of it right now? or 60 in three months. Yeah, it's a How? bus tour too. Like I was yeah. looking at it, country and to you country. had like date, 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 random day off. Date, 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 yeah, another random day off. Like, how? How sway? How do you do it? Like, how are you? We haven't done it yet, so we're, we'll let you know when it's over. Oh, you haven't done a we tour of never, this magnitude yet? We've never done a tour that has had this many dates in such a short amount of time. We've never done a tour on a bus. 
The never. bus will be interesting. That will be interesting. But is it just you? Interesting will be fun because we're bringing our whole crew. We have yeah. tons of friends coming and playing with mm-hmm. us. And you know, the best part is we get to see the whole country on the road, and we've never done that before. So we're just really excited to get there and meet everyone. Do you know the golden rule of uh, a tour bus? Oh, we do. <laughs> Can't do number two yeah. on a bus. No, no pooping. <laughs> Who else is gonna be on the bus with you guys? It's just gonna be you two on the uh, bus. Well, we're there with Sid, Zeko, Medusa, who's got that really dope song right now called "Piece of Your Heart." Wow. Yeah, yeah. Justin Caruso. Yeah, a couple out. other day ones that you know are in the industry killing it so we want to make it a really well-rounded lineup just make mm-hmm. it a dope show yeah. but i'm talking about like immediately on the bus with you guys you know they have bunks yeah who gets so the main got, room in the back of the bus well we all have no bunks. One. like we, there's gonna no be one's gonna take that people. one there's gonna be about 12 people so it's gonna be like our tour manager uh-huh. our videographer our production like our lighting our, our, our visual guy so there's gonna be like a lot of like moving pieces all right so after the tour what do you guys do? Are you gonna or what are you planning to do? Are you gonna work on an album? Are you gonna work on Well we have a bunch of music coming out during that tour, you know, it's been a process just getting everything ready and we're so excited to just release more. And then after that, who knows? You know, we'll be seeing more of the world and we're always staying creative, writing new music. A lot of collabs on the way, because I know you have that one with Bryce Vine right now. Yeah. It's a banger. I'm not alright, we love making that one. The reaction so far has been dope, so you know, we just wanna stay creative. He's like the complete opposite of you guys in a sense. Like he's so chill. I'm like, yo, what's up, dude? And you guys are like all like in your face kind of thing. Like, how did that work out when it came to creating Honest, music? Honestly, we were just in LA, and uh, one of our buddies was like, yeah, like I'm homies with Bryce. Like, do you want me to get you in the studio? I'm like, yeah, of course. Like, he's awesome. And then we we got in the studio, and he literally showed us like this like little hook idea. And we're like, yeah, we love this. Like, we we can work mm-hmm. with this. And then basically produced out the whole song around it. And then kind of like wherever we were. Um, literally traveling like in cars, planes, like in hotel rooms. We were just like the next few months, we were just working on the song and like building it out more. It's dope. It's a really good song. I'm actually really excited to see you guys perform it. Is that gonna be the first time you guys perform it today? Together? Like all? No, we've done no, it a few times yeah. together, okay. but this will be actually the first time since the song has been out. Oh, so nice. Um, what's one song you have to play in every every single set that you do? Body? Yeah. <laughs> no, but like, okay, aside from your songs, like what's a song you throw in? It's, it always changes, to be honest. That's the whole yeah. beauty of being a DJ is you're always looking it's for not new always records. One you know, have like a go-to? Yeah. I feel like as a DJ, you always have a couple go-tos. You're like, all right, if everything fails, I'm totally going to drop like uh, Montel Jordan. This is how we do it because I know it's going to work. Or back that ass up, never fails. Yeah. Do you have like go-tos like that that you know always work? Back in the day when we were open format, DJs for sure. But now, you know, people are coming and we're playing our own music. Yeah. So there's a couple edits that we have that mm-hmm. we'll mix up and throw around. But, you know, we try and make it about our music and it kind of feeling more like a concert than an open format set, you know? All right, last thing. Do you guys ever have disagreements with each other? Of course. Yeah. What do you we're guys? Prob- we're probably about to disagree on what to eat for lunch right now, to be honest. Well, how do you guys settle like disagreements, like whether they're creatively or whether they're disagreements about who gets which bunk? Like Rock, as, paper, as friends, okay, as friends, man. I don't know why I picked you guys out. pulling out. Like, remember, remember sock and boppers back in the day, like the gloves that oh, you that's put a good on. One. Yeah, that's I think you should take that on the tour bus. Yeah, and just, just like, take some boxing gloves. Like, hey, move the chairs. <laughs> we, it out. We're settling it right now. That's funny. <laughs> Loud luxury. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. Appreciate Thank you for having us. Thank you so much.